So the ultimate freaky wake up is in space. And it's just kind of eerie kind of lighting and people are floating around. <laughs> and I'm like, my God, what has happened? And they're like, oh yeah, that's right, I'm in space. I'm Mike Massimino and this is how sleep is different in space. I was an astronaut, a NASA astronaut for 18 years. I flew in space two times, two missions on the space shuttle. Both of those missions were missions to the Hubble Space Telescope where I was a spacewalker. So I got to spacewalk four times in my career at NASA. I think the most extraordinary thing you can do in life is to get outside of the spaceship and spacewalk. I really felt like I was a real spaceman when I was out there. And you can look in any direction, you're not just constrained by the window. So you see this gigantic ball taking up your field of view and it's, it's magnificent. Sleep is very important for your health. There's no doubt about it. People generally, I think, don't get enough sleep. That's what we hear, and I think that that's true, and even in my case here on Earth. I think at first it's a bit harder to sleep in space because you're trying to get used to it. But for me, once uh, I got used to it after a couple days, it was probably the best sleeping I've ever had. On Earth, in your bedroom, you most likely sleep in a bed with a pillow behind your head and warm covers on. You know, maybe the room's a little cooler. Usually it's a good idea for it to be dark. Maybe a glass of water by the bed in case you get thirsty. Access to the restroom. As you get older, that's more and more important. That's a whole nother issue. You have it set up so you're comfy and you can get a good night's rest. In space, it's different. So on the space shuttle, we did not have a separate bedroom. We had a flight deck and a mid-deck. Usually the commander and the pilot slept on the flight deck and the crew slept on the mid-deck, and we would set up our sleeping bags in different places. So then you rolled up the sleeping bag when you were done sleeping in the morning, and then rolled it back out at night. On the shuttle, there really isn't that much privacy. You do have some privacy when you use the, the hygiene compartment, the toilet and so on. There's a curtain that you can pull, you can draw clothes and have privacy, so that's important. Everything else you do is kind of out there with your friends, so when you're sleeping or when you're making a meal or whatever it is, you'll probably have someone else close by. On space station, it's a bit different. Being in space for only two weeks is kind of like a camping trip. Everyone's kind of in the same room, not a problem, kind of fun. But if you're gonna be up there for six months, like my friends up on the space station, you want a little more privacy than that. So they actually have a sleep station, a bedroom, which is kind of like a closet. It's not really like a room, it's more like a closet. They'll have their sleeping bag already mounted. They don't have to worry about rolling it up. They can put some of their clothing in there, they can put a computer in there, their music, pictures of their family, and you're in there and you've got your privacy to sleep comfortably. So that's like your own little bedroom in space on the space station. So you sleep in a bed, what you wear is up to you. You know, I kind of like my Snoopy pajamas. So you might, whatever you feel comfortable in wearing uh, or not. You can control the temperature, so you can put on the air conditioning if you need to, if it's too hot, or you can turn the heat up. I usually have a glass of water next to my bed. I don't use a sleep mask or earplugs or anything like that, and generally works pretty well. In space, on the space shuttle, we didn't have beds, so I would have to set up my sleeping bag. Our sleeping bag is not like your regular sleeping bag that you would have on a camping trip. It was more like a bedroll, and you could get in, inside of it. Didn't have much of a of a blanket, it was more like a canvas sleeping bag. It had a lot of straps and hooks on it so you could hook it to things. So you don't want to get in your sleeping bag and then float around the cabin and wake up your friends and knock your head. So you would attach it with these various hooks to different things that you could hook it to. So I set up my sleeping bag on the ceiling so I could sleep up there like I was a bat. I thought that was kind of cool. And other people slept different, but it was like a big slumber party. And I would use those hooks to set it up and then I would open up the two pieces of canvas sort of and get inside of it, it's pretty comfortable. And then once you get inside, you're kind of in there and then you're floating around with it. I mean, you're not floating all over the place, but you're still floating within that sleeping bag, which is pretty cool. And your arms naturally in space will just rise up like this. Like on Earth, you know, we don't necessarily walk around with our hands up all the time. It's a little tough on your shoulders to do that all day. But in space, it's just, they don't have any weight to them. So you, even your, so your hands are kind of like, just kind of floats. You see people like, like this. When I heard this, I thought this was a little crazy, but it works really well. I was so used to using a pillow on Earth. The pillow is attached to the sleeping bag. It's kind of integrated, right, with Velcro, so you can take it off if you need to. And then there's a band, more or less, attached to it that you wrap around your head. 
And it's very comfortable. I thought it would, I thought it, it sounded crazy, but it, it works. It's usually pretty cold in the, in the spacecraft, being a few degrees colder than normal. So I would wear gym shorts and a t-shirt, socks, uh, wool hat to keep your head warm. And if you need a little extra, you could put on sweatpants or a sweatshirt. So that was my basic pajamas. That's about it. You know, you, you, you shut off the lights and you try to make it quiet and cool and comfortable and, and try not to make too much noise and have everyone try to get a good night's rest. On my first flight, I wore an act watch. It was a Harvard University study, from what I remember. Somehow they collected data with that thing to give us an idea of our activity and our sleep cycles and, and so on. You had to keep a pretty good log about when you were going to sleep and what you were doing with that. And I think I was pretty conscientious about that on my first flight. My second flight, I wasn't as conscientious and I forgot to wear the watch for a couple days. And I told them, hey, I didn't wear it for, I forgot to put it on these. And they're like, okay, we won't be able to use your data. But they do, they do track that and there are sleep studies. There really is no training to actually sleep because the basic idea is the same. Close your eyes and go to sleep. However, you get a lot of information about how you can do that more comfortably in the different environment of space. So for example, uh, using earplugs. I don't normally use earplugs when I'm trying to sleep on Earth, but in space there's a, somewhat of a constant whir of machinery and sometimes a little crackle of the comm system or something like that. So it could be a little noisy, so you, I use earplugs. Also, you always kind of keep a light on in case you wake up, you can get where you, to, you need to get to the restroom or do something. So I wore a sleep mask in space. Again, something I normally don't wear when I'm on Earth. So one of the best things about traveling to space is that you don't have to pack your own luggage. We have professionals to do that for you because there's a lot of things you need. You don't want to forget anything. I'm sure I would have forgotten some important things. It's kind of a fun day where you pick out what you're going to take for your personal hygiene items. You know, do you want a, an electric razor or do you want to shave with shaving cream with a regular razor? And so the sleep items are picked out in the same way. What kind of earplugs you might want to use, what kind of sleep mask you might want to use. If you have a special one from home that you want to bring, you can hand those in and they'll fly those and then you keep them afterwards or they can supply it for you. And I did use a little bit of mild sleep medication on my first two nights in space. I really wanted to get my rest. I was concerned about not being able to fall asleep, so I did use a little bit of sleep medicine for my first two nights, and then I felt like I didn't, I didn't need it, but it was really important to get my rest. If you want to bring your teddy bear, you can. I did bring my Snoopy with me. I had a toy Snoopy that I brought with me. Mission comes first, and if the teddy bear is going to make you feel more comfortable and get you better rest, I would say that's an essential item. On the space shuttle, the way we woke up was you would be woken up by wake-up music. They would rotate the wake-up music uh, by crew member based on what was going on that day. The family usually picks that out, your, your wife or your kids or someone will pick that out for you and you can try to guess whether or not it's, it's your song. My first flight, I heard Frank Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon come on. I was convinced that was going to be my song, but it wasn't. I got the Mission Impossible theme. I think it was a lack of confidence on a part of my family for that one. On Space Station, it's more like a, an alarm that is set that'll go off. But the ground will make sure you're, you're awake and ready to go. On Earth, you know, we have a 24-hour day. We have a morning and an evening. I generally get up early morning, go to bed not too late, try to do that. Space is not going to work like that because you're traveling around the planet uh, at a very high speed, 17,500 miles an hour, which means you're going to make an orbit of our planet in an hour and a half, in about 90 minutes. You still maintain a 24-hour day. You have an uh, eight-hour sleep period, getting ready for bed, we call it pre-sleep before that, a little bit of time after we call it post-sleep where you're getting ready to start your day, and then you more or less work in between that. But as you're going around the planet like this, half the time it's, it's dark, half the time it's bright. Every 45 minutes you go through that transition. You get 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets in a 24-hour period. And so if you were trying to plan your sleep schedule around that, you'd have to go to sleep and wake up every 45 minutes. It's not going to work. So you don't tell time necessarily by whether it's 
it's light, light outside or dark outside, you go by the clock. And in the shuttle flights, it was by mission elapsed time. That period, while that's going on, those eight hours when you're sleeping, you're zipping around the planet still, and it's light outside and it's dark outside. So the darkness would probably be okay. You wouldn't necessarily wake up because of the darkness, but the bright sunlight, it is so bright. The sun is the brightest light I've ever experienced. It's almost like a pure white light. That light gets filtered a little bit through the window. On Earth, it gets filtered a lot by our atmosphere, so we don't get the same, even on a very bright, clear, sunny day, it's nothing like being in space. So we have uh, window shades. So staying up late on the space shuttle to look out the window really wasn't an option because our commander would block the windows with these window shades so it would remain dark and then the window shades would come out during the, during the day in the morning. Now the space station, you have your own little space to sleep in so you close your little door and shut off the light and it's dark and so there's no real need for window covers there because they can come, they can get light and dark outside of your room and you're not gonna notice. On Earth, we have our different senses to tell us where we are. Visually, we know we're upside down, right side up, but more subtly maybe, we also have our vestibular system, which works on gravity, our inner ear, that tells us if we're lying down or we're standing straight up or we're upside down or whatever it is, or we're moving, accelerating, and so on. In space, your vestibular system is telling your brain nothing. Your eyes are saying you're moving around, but your inner ear is telling you you're perfectly still, and it could lead to nausea, which happened to me on my first flight. But your brain gets used to that, and after a couple of days, you can, have a, you can be standing on the ceiling having a conversation, and you're fine. That's pretty cool, and that's why you can sleep on the ceiling. You're floating up there, and, and close your eyes, and your brain's okay with it. Snoring is something I do on Earth. I think it's unclear still whether or not you snore in space or as much. I always thought you didn't snore in space. That, you know, in that position that we're on on Earth and the way gravity works, in space, you're, you're kind of floating there. So I did not think that I snored in space. However, I was told that one of the later days during our flights that I was actually snoring. And one of my crewmates had heard a trick to get you to stop snoring was to grab the person by the ankles. I don't know if this works on Earth. I don't know how she found this out, but apparently uh, I was snoring and one of my crewmates got out of her sleeping bag and grabbed me by the ankles. I don't know if that woke me up or not, but it stopped the snoring. Maybe that's a hint, something to remember if you're ever in space and your crewmate is snoring. I have not had any nightmares related to space. I've dreamt a lot about space, though. When you go to bed at the end of a day in space, I remember closing my eyes and thinking about all the wondrous things I had seen. And my eyes had really seen some cool stuff, and I would kind of dwell on that. I have this, re you know, this recurring dream that I'm back in space and we're going back to fix the telescope one more time. Like there was one more time to go, and I'm up there with my crewmates, and. We're doing different things up there, what we're, we're trying to fix. So I do dream about going back to space a lot. It's a real privilege to get to see what we're saying and get to work on this magnificent machine. Could it be, uh, could be any more grateful for the opportunity? Sleep in space has kind of evolved over the years, right? At first, they didn't sleep at all. The first couple of missions were fairly short. Then they started longer and longer and people needed to sleep. And then we made a big leap with the space station in people living there and needing their own little place to sleep. And the next step might be much longer missions where people are going to Mars for six months or in the future, hopefully we're going much further than that. And you're still gonna need to sleep. Having a private area might need to be a little bit larger. Maybe your crew quarters needs to be a little bit larger. This idea for very long uh, voyages of having like this cryo sleep that you see in the movies, I'm not so sure about that. You know, I don't know if I'd feel like I'm gonna go sleep for five years, but maybe that's the way to do it. I think we have time to figure that out. At this point, I think we've, we've determined a couple of things. I think having a private area where you can feel comfortable, like you are comfortable in your bedroom when it's time to go to bed. I think we're pretty good about knowing it needs to be quiet, knowing about shifting. You do need your eight hours a day. So I think all these things that we learned have led us to where we are now with space travel. And so I, I think we are ready to go on these longer voyages that will be happening 
and sleep is going to be a big part of that. I think to, to counteract that, we should find a better propulsion system so you can get places a lot more quickly. Then you don't have to worry about that as much. And I think that eventually will come as well. But sleeping is really important. It's important for us here on Earth for our health and well-being. And in space, it's, it's just as important, maybe even more so, because you want to be on the top of your game during a mission.